Playing some more red black mid range, the same list we played the other day. The last league we played with this deck, we trophied, been doing pretty well with it. Uh, still think it's one of the best decks in the format. Just want to get a couple more reps in with the deck before this weekend. Exit Dose, thank you for your two month three subscription. Appreciate you, buddy. On the play, good start. Monkey. All right, well, huh? I got what I asked for, but that's all I have. Kind of an interesting hand. Maybe I need to like really figure out if these are the kind of hands I need to keep in the in the blind on the play. My opponent didn't reveal Luris, so not hammer time, not the mirror. Mm. Waffle said months will go back. Mm, I'm gonna send this one back. Well, no, I was not 100% sure about that, of course. Let's keep this one. I think with this hand, I'm gonna go Inquisition on turn one into Ragavan Thoughtseize. Hmm. We have to take the Living End, which is not gonna be great for us. The Waker of Wave particularly is a pretty obnoxious card here. They drew Violent Outburst. I think we have to take that. Although they don't have green mana yet. Now I need to... Need to be better about managing the revealed pile. I that is one huge advantage Arena has though, is that it just manages that for you. We need to try to wait another turn, try to maximize draw sort of cascader. Well, no, I think you want I like I wanted to take the waker of the waves pretty badly. Uh, because that's that gives it a little bit of extra extra selection. I don't want them to be able to wake her this turn. Let's see, if they go wake her into Cascade, we draw a fetch land, escape Kroxa, take 11. Probably can't win if they find the Cascader here. And, they, and they, they're they like pretty likely to. Oh, they did not, they bricked. Cool. Any changes to deck? No, we five build the last league we played with the deck. I'm pretty happy with the 75 at the moment. Um, I do feel like there are some flex spots in the 75, but I I don't think that the metagame has really shifted enough for me to want to change too much right now. That's a really interesting hit. Because assuming they haven't found the Cascader. Oh, wait. Oh, I guess I... Sorry, I just tapped one too many mana. But assuming they haven't found a Cascader, we could maybe uh, stall them a bit here. So let's go top, top, top. Still Luris? Are we still playing Luris? Yes, of course. Well, a bit worried about this. Don't worry about Violent Outburst. No Violent Outburst. Awesome. They're getting pretty close to just being dead to, like, the Kroxa. You know, like, play and escape. Do I cast this Wind Caller, Avid? I think I'm just going to go Luris Kroxa here. Oh, I don't have enough mana. Uh, I guess I'll just go Luris then. Just having the Architects in play count as a good time to use the steel command. Yeah, I think it's fine. I'll allow it. Wow, that was very lucky. They had so many looks at another Cascader. I don't know that I've ever played this matchup and had my opponent brick that hard. This matchup is always super weird. They, especially the, the Voidwalker particularly makes the matchup a headache usually where 
if they source if they cast Charlotte's agent and you have Voidwalker in the graveyard, you get to Voidwalker they're living in. Um and so like a lot of the there's a lot of the dance around killing your own Voidwalker, discarding your own vo- void Voidwalker at instant speed with Kologon's command, which is part of the reason why I like Kologon's command. And like try to set that up as you're out to their living end. It's all it's all very weird. We cast Krogs of Graveyard for two. Uh, yeah, but I didn't have enough. I, didn't have, I, I, I could have that next turn, yeah, but I didn't have enough mana to lure us in hand, lure us and Krogs of Graveyard. No spell bomb. This is a Pyrate spell bomb, not Nile spell bomb. This is in the sideboard to deal with the protection from white creatures. I like Sanctifier and Vac and Ariok Champion. Or so the, the protection from red, white creatures. Um, well, we've got some good cards in the matchup. No lands, though. I right, definitely have to keep this one. It sounds really, really good if this Shizo is a is a red source, or especially if it's a dual land. But uh, you can't. You, there's no way we can <laughs> mulligan double discard spell, double uh, hate piece. And I mean, even though even though they have the the grief, this this hand really showcases why it's uh, it's so nice to split these because, um, uh, we like if we had two chalices, we couldn't play both chalices out this hand. Although, that being said, if we had two chalices, maybe it's a bit better than grief here, huh? Right, they have striped river winder on top. And we have two inquisitions for their two violent outbursts. Need to draw a red source at some point, though. Right, two more looks. They're drawing architects of will. Oh, I need to. Well, so now that I've exited out there, I don't have to worry about uh clicking through everything a second time. All right, still no second land. We've had this is gonna be our fifth look at a land. There we go, awesome. Wood mirror is also kind of nice because it stops. Um, Force of Vigor and Grief and Subtlety. Oh, did they, they didn't play a land on turn one. I just totally didn't notice that. It's weird. I mean, I, I, it seems like that means they kept a zero lander with Grief and a bunch of Cyclers and a Violent Outburst. You could have stacked it last turn so you could Ragavan their Grief. Maybe. But Grief was also like the worst draw step for them by a lot. And yeah, I think I think I just wanted them to draw the Grief. Instead of like getting to start to chain cyclers together. And it's, yeah, that's not even true. If I put the Grief lower, then they're just able to cycle into the Grief. Because the other two cards were cyclers. My opponents always have the Brazen Borrowers for the Void Mirror. Yeah, they, you don't have infinite time with the, the Void Mirrors in play. Speaking of casting grief, though, we're gonna. <laughs> I guess you were right. Man, this card's so good. They should maybe have pre banned this card in modern, huh? I can't believe they let this card into the modern format. All right, they, my opponent also has the petty theft. Is the top card of my opponent's library uh, a cascade spell? It is not. Like, no other deck pilots are so willing to abandon their archetype for another strategy when the meta starts to become just a little bit unfavorable for it. You know what I mean? Especially when Amulet is just such a powerful deck. It's just... And it, it maybe it's because the Amulet players are just so smart. They understand that it's just better to do another grief deck. Maybe the Amulet players are just so smart that they understand that amulet's just not the best choice for the tournaments even though they've spent all this time mastering it but i feel like you don't see that in other archetype masters like people will just defiantly play their favorite archetype forever um and uh all right removal spell would be nice to draw i guess we're casting this uh undying evil is kind of a pain in the butt here let's take that 
kind of rambling, but it's just like a Amulet is a really powerful deck. I don't think the format has completely hated it out. Even even in your like worst matchups, like the Amulet Masters can absolutely leverage their skill and just the raw power level of their deck to wins. Um, so I wouldn't be too worried about it. Maybe I should just play the Blood Crypt tapped. Mm, I mean, I, I I always I always hate to advise people on if cards are gonna get banned or not, you know, because yeah, you know, at the end of the day, it, wizards can be like a really difficult entity to predict their uh, you know their actions, right? Um, thank you, Glory Fades, for the gifted sub to Pi. Um, but I I don't really feel like Ragavan is gonna get banned. Like this this is. You know, at the end of the day, a, a one mana two one that uh, is is weak to cards like Min Might and Gutshot and Lava Dart and Young Wolf and like R Ragavan does. You know, is is pretty obnoxious to play against on turn one for a lot of decks, but after turn one, it tends to really just not be that big a deal. I guess the Grief Ephemerate thing is pretty good if your opponent just only draws lands. Cauldra. Cauldra's gonna be tough to beat. Nor do you six months, welcome back. Forces people to have interactions similar to Twitch, which I like. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I do I do think that when cards force players like not only not only when like cards like lightning bolt, fatal push. Uh, unholy heat prismatic ending not only when these cards are like necessary to play when those cards are actually good uh i think that's when modern is good like when in the in the faithless looting hogak you know vengevine era one mana removal spells just weren't that good because all the creatures just came back from the graveyard and all the creatures just like you know so many creatures just cost zero mana to put into play all right i think we have to take this hit unfortunately Oh, sorry, yeah, if, if I ever miss your uh, deck tech, just uh, yell at me. We got Bant Eldrazi, interesting. Uh, hmm. Well, hopefully Ragavan finds us something good, huh? The problem is their deck is, you know, a little... Oh boy, no, we don't have double white. Ugh, okay, now, now we know for sure that splashing white in this deck is the... the is, is certainly the best move for uh, our strategy, huh? All right, so we play Darcy, can't block grief, jump here. Okay. Should have splashed white, huh? Yeah, Mardu greater. Mar Mardu just the best version of the deck for sure. Okay, uh, I'm gonna bring in Unearth. I think I'm gonna be. I'm gonna get to the deck deck in a second. I'm gonna be trimming on the discard spells a little bit. I think five or six is the number we want to be on. Probably want the Pyrite Spell Bomb. I'm gonna play three Thoughtseize because they have like Solitude Grief. Yeah, they actually have like a decent number of pro white creatures, the more I'm thinking about it. They actually play all the explosives. I think that's their best way to win the game besides us floating out like that one. So one thing is I feel like this archetype is a little underpowered these days. And I, I and I also feel like not too much has changed about that. Where you know, like this deck is gonna really struggle against like Dragon Rage's Channeler, Merktide Regent, just because of how slow the deck can be. Uh, one thing I I feel like you need to be playing for Cavern, especially with like the prevalence of the blue red deck with the counter spells. I like the worship. I might play like a second one in the sideboard. Four path feels like way too many in the board. I'd be playing a bit more targeted artifact hate. Like Ataki. It's a card I've been really liking. Ataki should probably just be in like almost every white deck sideboard besides, you know, actual hammer time. But besides that, it feels like you've got a pretty good stock list of the of the Bantel Draws deck. I just don't think I'd recommend the archetype in general. G Sims, two months, welcome back. Appreciate you. Do you 
or anyone you never test magmatic channeler i mean i've i've played with magmatic channeler in modern i haven't played with it in this deck i don't think it's better than void walker but it could be see if they have their combo they don't so what exactly does midrange mean a midrange deck is you know a little bit hard to define because it doesn't necessarily fit into you know a traditional archetype like control or aggro because it kind of has flexible game plans in in various matchups where it can it can perform as a control deck in a lot of ma matchups and it can it can perform like a lot of um aggro decks in some matchups and, and the this one of the biggest strengths of an archetype like this is the ability to to pivot a bit mm, a bit worried about that damn oh the, this black white midrange deck is just so clunky also a bit worried if i take the dam if they just wait a turn on the skyclave it's a bit of a problem i'm gonna take the dam Cell pump being used for saga decks because it's quicker hitting the board. I ask me using my blurs. Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like turn turn three on the draw against Saga. If you're trying to blood moon their saga, it's just a bit too slow, in my opinion and in my experience. Okay, so now we get to Kroxa, which turns on Delirium. Hold up bolt. I've seen some black white players splash blue in this deck. Uh, I've seen that. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, I think that it's not as good as this version. Uh, it, it's it's just like pe people splashing in this deck. You know, need to understand that you are increasing. You know, the like the flexibility of your deck with sideboard cards. You may be increasing the like the the power level a bit with expressive iteration. But your mana, your mana is a lot worse if you're a third color. It's a lot more painful. It's less consistent, especially if you splash white for prismatic ending. Splashing that one mana spell, I I do feel like hurts a lot. Um, that being said, like you, I think you're, I think the, both options are fine. The core of this deck is very very strong. The Ragavan Darcy discard spells with the one mana removal this core of the deck is incredibly strong and that's that's that part is really just not going to change anytime soon um let's see i feel like i just want to play the second darcy i'm trying to think if it's even possible so my opponent has two ephemerates an undying evil and a mystery card so the two unknown cards after their draw step have to be untapped land plus dam i just don't think i'm supposed to play around that Bolt our opponent. Well, though the shambling vent has lifelink, so if we bolt our opponent, uh, they will be at one less life. Yeah, they they would go to one if we if we took your line, I believe. Right. I think your math's wrong. This deck still be good if Ragavan is banned. Uh, I think it would still be playable. Like you know, people keep talking. One thing is people keep talking about Ragavan being banned. Dragon Rage's Channeler is better than Ragavan. Uh, so, I, I, and, and, you know, maybe Channeler is a bit of a more fair card because it's a card you can leave and play for a turn or two without needing to kill it immediately. But Channeler is a better card than Ragavan. Do we have a problem with Solitude in that spot if we don't uh, leave up Command? Uh, that's true, yeah. Although they they have like two protection spells for it actually, so I, actually maybe maybe not. They just have two ways to protect their solitude. The signet prelate a really good card against black red. It's 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 good. Um, it's it's very good I think, but it, it got a little bit worse once. Um, or it, it's a little bit worse now that uh, red black is playing terminate. It's, it's I guess also Kologon's command is a good answer to it, but it, it's a good card I think. It's a card that you're pretty happy to have in the matchup, one that you're probably not going to side out. It's not literally three mana win the game. Um, <laughs> it's like Kataki is not two mana win the game against Hammer Time, but it's, it's pretty strong against them. Yeah, yeah, like it, it is definitely true that Ragavan is better than Darcy on turn one, and Ragavan also is 
like just a pain to play against or I would say more of a pain to play against than Darcy but it just does feel weird when there's two new really good red one drops to be talking about banning the one that's the, like the, the less good one um I think we can graveyard that let's stay Meyer on top I want to hold up bolts. I think I do. Do all the bobble decks survive if bobble gets hit with the band or Luris decks in general? I think this deck would still be a, a totally fine option if bobble got banned. Um, I, I personally feel like bobble will be banned in modern at some point. Maybe this year, maybe next year, maybe the year after. But right now is the worst Mishra's bobble will ever be. They're just going to be more cards that synergize with a zero mana artifact cantrip. They're just, they're, these cards are just going to continue to be printed. Um, it just, it, I, Bobble just works with so many cards. Okay, I think I'm going to use Kolagon's command to get back Darcy this turn, and next turn go Darcy, Darcy, Bobble, one mana removal spell. Yeah, I don't think that anything needs to be banned at the moment. I should probably clarify that. I think the format's pretty good at the moment. I wouldn't recommend banning anything. Um, but uh, I don't think that Dr Bobble can survive forever. They're just going to print more Lurises, more Dragon Rages Channelers, more cards like Unholy Heat that get powered up by Bobble. But at the time of making this comment, Modern it feels like it's in a really good shape. Things are fun. We don't really need to fret too much, I feel. I guess I'll actually make them discard. Because I just want to have a good target for one of these removal spells here. Discarded Grief. Well, I guess that punishes me for taking my line. Do you think the deck's still viable if Bobble's banned? Yeah, absolutely. Just it's just like a, a like maybe a necessary nerf to this archetype. Still don't have delirium. We need a creature or sorcery. Okay, there's a sorcery. And then I'll save the bobble for their turn because of discard spells. As a Grief Blade player, uh, what are you recommending against sideboard options for Rectus Midrange? Uh, Sanctum Prelate is the best card you can play, probably. And they're drawing Leyline of the Void. Leyline's also good, but I would, I kind of would prefer Prelate. Although it's kind of nice that Leyline's immune to discard. Spider Ham, 14 months, appreciate ya. It's just kind of hard to mulligan to Leyline in these matchups. Think about Bowmat in this kind of deck, it's probably like a reasonable budget option. I'm a bully, I'm a bow map believer. And we could bolt our own Darcy, then Undying Evil for a counter. <laughs> we could Undying Evil Ragavan, Legend Rule Ragavan. Let's put Laris in my hand. And I like the Sync to Prelate Rip Apart Jessica deck. I didn't actually ever play that deck. I did post the list to Stream Decker because I was really unsure about it. Uh, but the more I think about it, the more I just kind of think that deck's a bit slow and, and worse than the Just Guy Stoneblade deck that I played yesterday, which was main decking Spell Stutter Sprite. And Spell Stutter Sprite has been feeling really good recently. Or, I mean, I guess just yesterday, but in, in this metagame, Spell Stutter Sprite seems very, very good against the Hammer Time, Darcy Ragavan decks, and the and the Cascade decks, which just feel like the three pillars of modern at the moment. Just very strong across the against the most powerful decks. Very good place to be. What's my overall win rate with this? I stopped counting, but it, it has started to level out a bit. As as the metagame has adjusted a bit, uh the 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 my insane win record that I've had has become more human i'm gonna play cast ragavan dash ragavan legend rule to get delirium yeah but the metagame started to adjust a bit people started playing like cards that are good against rakdos and feels like we're just playing a good deck instead of a broken deck now i think i need to kill kaya The 
You can spitter, consider Esper Sentinel in a non-Esper deck like Jeskai Stoneblade. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I, 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 yeah, I don't think that you need to be playing an Esper deck to to want Esper Sentinel. Yeah, let's bolt Kaya now. Graveyard. Love to find a Kroxa. Mm, I don't think I need Voidwalker. It's probably fine to keep Voidwalker. The Kaya down. Also a bit worried about Dam. Is Kaya a good versus our deck? Uh, yeah, Kaya's good against our deck. It's not, you know, three mana win the game, but it's a, it's a strong card in the matchup. Kaya is, I think, a strong card in the format in general, actually. Kaya seems to be very good against uh, both Hammer Time and the Ragavan Darcy decks. MTGO Premium allows me to tap Graven Cairns for, uh, for black mana, by the way. Not too much we can do with that one, unfortunately. Yeah, Kai is definitely a card that like waxes and wanes and how good it is. It seems pretty good right now. Well, I think my opponent was holding the push to try to kill Ragavan. That's why they waited there. I'm not sure that that was correct, but pretty sure that's why. Pretty happy to keep that on Earth. Opponent's dead on board. All right, off to a two and no start. I think, All right? Playing against Mill. I don't have a sideboard card for Mill in my sideboard of Rakdos. I think the matchup is pretty fine. Although I'm, I am like pretty ter. I'm, I am kind of terrified of Tasha's hideous laughter. So we'll see how fine it actually ends up being. GG's Calway. They just drew a surgical extraction. They've got a second crab. Maybe no third land. Yeah, Crux is pretty good against them. Although they've got surgical in their hand, so they've got some game against it here. I'm gonna thought seize because I don't want to Crux it into the surgical. They have archive trap, fractured sanity, which is pretty, you know, like uncastable here. And Archive Trap, which we can try to play around. Although, if, if they feel to ruin me, I guess they're just going to get to Archive Trap, huh? That Luris in the equation, would Voidwalker still be deserving of main deck spots? Uh, yeah, I've been I've been really liking Voidwalker, yeah. Voidwalker's good. Wait, milled over two, our other two Kroxas. So my opponent's hand is Fractured Sanity Mystery Card. Discord spell would be really nice, or removal spell for a crab. Okay, uh, definitely taking this. I think I want to fetch this turn unless I see that their other card is trap. It's not surgical, is it? It looks like it's okay. Just just drown the lock. Make sure I actually have a swamp to get. I do. And now we just uh, pray to Clothis that my opponent never finds Tasha's hideous laughter. They found a watery grave. They should not put Luris in their hand because I have uh, um, Croxa to escape and make them discard it. We're down to only 18 cards in our graveyard. They also have a Boro to go with their crab. Born cash register, but crooks it kills really quick. I guess we die to Tasha's, we die to Fractured Sanity. They just drew a swamp, which is pretty good for us. They put Luris into their hand to the, just to save three life. I guess we terminate the crab. But my Hit my opponent for six. Put Luris in our hand. Close game. 
They go down to 11, which means they're dead to, if they draw a land, they die to uh, Kroxa attack and then just escaping Kroxa again. They may balance discarded Boro. Oh, they probably should have. Three, dash. Yeah, I think I'll just attack with Kroxa. Fatal push. Let's see, do I have another fetchable target? And if I do, do I want to play the Void Walker? I'm out of basics, but I think I, it looks like I've got Blood Crypts left in the deck. Yeah, we don't die to, we don't die to Glimpse. We still die to all the other stuff. So I think that it's fine to play the Void Walker here. Can I talk about cutting down Turok three copies? I, I just wanted one less threat and one more removal spell with like the way the metagame is shaping up. And I think the threat to cut was Turok. Yeah, it's mostly about like Turok's like probably is the worst threat in the deck, but it, it is really nice to have like a solid four mana creature in your in your Luris deck. Not a card I dislike. All right, we got a little bit lucky with our opponent's top decks. Gonna bring in the fourth thought sees. Gonna bring in the unearth. Terminate's probably a card I don't like want want that badly, but it's also true that I might want to be siding up cards. I've kind of like just siding up a few extra cards in this matchup. The list doesn't run Glimpse anymore. I, I've seen, I think people are a little all over the place uh, where I've seen some people playing Glimpse. I've seen some people playing uh, Orb and I've seen some people just not even playing Tasha's. We had a mill opponent yesterday who wasn't playing Tasha's, which is, I just imagine that they've been quarantined to some subsection of the, of the uh, Discord. <laughs> um, yeah, let me, I think I'll just play two Terminates. We had 62 cards here. Besides the obvious mana benefits, is there another reason I prefer this over the Grixis Luris lists? Um, well, I, I think like, I, I don't think that you get that much power level for splashing blue. You get you get a decent amount. Um, but I don't think that the, it, you, you're, if your Grixis, your deck is a little bit more powerful, but your mana is like, is enough worse that I think that it's, uh, my opponent didn't play anything on turn one. I'm gonna hold the bobble for Darcy, I think. Um, your your power level is not increased enough to compensate for the mana uh, differences, but that but that is of course the only differences in the deck is is the mana. Or or it's like yeah, you you, you make, your mana is worse for a little bit of a, at a power level, but it's not worth it in my opinion. Sorry for just rambling and saying the same thing like three times. I should probably just put that on top. No, I'll put it on the graveyard, but a bit worried about surgical. They have another archive trap on top. It's a good one to know about. Do you have any rule of source thumbs you should have for color turn one plagues and red right for turn one bolt? And what's a bit different, it's like it's going gonna, it's gonna to vary from deck to deck, where if you just have turn one Bolt, especially if you're a control deck that doesn't always care about casting Bolt on turn one, you're going to want less red sources than a burn deck. And if you're going to play, if you're going to have Ragavan, Darcy, Lightning Bolt, all of a sudden you want something like 18 untapped red sources. Um, 17, 18. But yeah, I, I, don't, I don't have too many... Um, hard deck building heuristics um because i find that the more and more you build decks the more and more you find like the like common deck building rules that people have just tend to be tend to be rules that you want to break or like that or you find like exceptions to rules and um i think that those kind of like tips and tricks and and deck building heuristics are really good for uh, new deck builders, new modern players. I use the treasure tokens here because we know our opponent has trap in their hand. I don't want to fetch and turn on their trap. Um, okay, Tasha's hideous laughter. We have seven cards left in our library, but 
where they're also just dead on board, so. That was pretty good. That was like, they excelled 34 cards. <laughs> or, sorry, no, they excelled 30 cards, right? I have five of these, oh wait, five of these are Kroxa. Five of these are Kroxa, and then the rest is, the rest is their Tasha's, so 29? Didn't have the trap, I got it with Ragavan. Oh, did I? You're right. Still maybe it was good to play around it. That was uh, scary though. But, you know, it is just a three mana sorcery that doesn't impact the board. Right? First day of class was 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 really good. The point we're bringing its elementals. We can keep this. Uh, Darcy's really good against elementals, being a, a three three flyer. Yeah, I was told that uh, first day of class was like the truth, and I was a little hesitant, and it, the card felt not very good to me. Elementals is a really bad matchup, by the way. So they got Risen Reef, so I want to wait till next turn when I can to cast the Thoughtseize when I can Thoughtseize the Risen Reef. If they hadn't played Flamekin Harbinger on turn one, I'd probably lead on Thoughtseize. Maybe not. Uh yeah, Ragaman not too good against Flamekin Harbinger. Let's put it in the graveyard. I think putting it in the graveyard also means oh I should not have bobbled. We knew what they're drawing. Uh but next turn with the fetch land of the Thoughtseize, we're gonna have Delirium. And I have found that a, a fast Delirious Darcy is a pretty key uh component of this matchup where they just they just will win this the long game second rc is such a good draw uh your my our opponents will just win this long game they are so grindy so you have to be able to fly over quickly galwin 86 welcome back appreciate you yeah, you can win any bad matchup but honestly like i feel like elementals is maybe of the decks that people are playing is maybe the deck I want to see the least with Rakdos. How subtle do I think the meta is at this point? Um, well, one thing to, to understand is that the modern meta is always going to be fluctuating. At least I hope so. That's That's been the case for like a year is that the meta fluctuates a little bit from month to month and things, oh, that's good you know, ebb and flow in their viability and how competitive they are from week to week. And you can either choose to try to play the best deck every weekend, or you can try to um, master a deck and play it over and over again, dependent on the metagame. And like one of the biggest charms to modern is that both of those two options are, 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 are totally reasonable. It's totally reasonable to just play, if you're a, a Titan master or if you're a hammer time master, it's totally reasonable to just play those decks forever. Um, and, and it's usually true that like the more linear decks are the ones that you can continue to play over and over again. Oh, dude, Mariner's so good here. <sighs> Man, just, just totally hoses Kologon's command. It double triggers if I target them and the Mariner too. Like I'm just casting Turok here, and then maybe we get to trigger it off of Kroxa next turn, or the Kologon's Command. And so, like, if you're gonna, if you want to, like, buy into modern and you want to become a, you know, a big modern player, uh, and you want to play fair decks, then what you're gonna really have to do is like change fair decks from week to week because you need to pick like the best tools for the job as to, like try to beat the top decks of the format. You know, is what I do. So I, I believe that if we Kologon's Command here, uh, two damage to Mariner, make our opponent discard a card, that um, Mariner triggers twice, and we won't get to, we won't get to, uh, um, it, it, it'll get countered. And so we can escape Kroxa, but one issue with escaping Kroxa is that turns off Delirium for Darcy, But I guess that's actually just going to be fine if we do that post-combat. Troxa doesn't target. Day 10 months, welcome back, appreciate you. 
How's the Adnaz matchup as Red Black? Uh, it's fine. Like the the Chalice, the Void, and Void Mirrors, and the Cyborgs surprisingly are pretty relevant. Uh, I'd say maybe Adnaz is slightly favored, but it's close. Depends on how many ley lines they play, maybe. Mm. Gonna leave artifact creature in the yard. Then we can discard our own swamp next turn to get delirium again. Any device on the humans matchup? Ooh. Humans is probably a, a hard matchup, especially with Esper Sentinel. You probably would maybe need some more dedicated sideboard cards if you if you're if like there's a ton of humans in your metagame. I guess I'll I guess I'll just maybe not attack with Darcy this turn so I can uh I, I I can surveil a land or a sorcery into the yard to get uh delirium, but just like getting my opponent hellbent, triggering Turok twice seems pretty good to me. And we'll just keep Lightning Bolt on top. Yeah, Turok looking pretty good here. They do have to chump block. If you have both Darcy and a one-man discard spell, which do I play turn one typically? It kind of depends on the rest of your hand. Do you know the matchup? Um, how many lands do you have? Where if like you need if you need Darcy to surveil you into lands, then you probably need to uh, play the Darcy first. But if you're really reliant on this Darcy living to construct your hand, you probably play the discard spell first. So Void Mirror stops the Pitch Elementals. Stops the Rebound Ephemerate. It's not that good. I think I'll play one Void Mirror, one Thought Seize. Terminate seems like a kind of inefficient removal spell. I think I'm gonna cut two Ragavans. Though Ragavan seems like the worst card of the matchup. Rick and Morty reference. Thank you for your Twitch Prime subscription. Appreciate you, buddy. I explain why Void Mirror over Chalice. We're not playing it over Chalice. We're playing it as a split with Chalice of the Void. We're playing two Void Mirror, one Chalice. The reason is, uh, like, the, the Cascade decks will bring in cards that can answer your Chalice or Void Mirror effects. They, they, they side in cards that deal with them. And if you draw two Chalices you can't play both out at the same time because the first Chalice will counter the second. But if you draw Chalice, Void Mirror, Chalice first, then you can Void Mirror. You can cast two Void Mirrors. Um, so Void Mirror is like way better to draw in multiples or way better to draw after the, the Chalice. And it, it has come up in the past too. Um, I think I'm gonna go Thoughtseize on one, Void Walker on two, Darcy Void Mirror on three. What is this keep? I'm just gonna take the Risen Reef. Oh, if I take Risen Reef, the Vesper Lark gets a lot better. So I'll just take the Mariner. Well, kind of tempted to Ragavan. I think it's. I think especially with that Omnath in their hand, though, it's probably a bit better to establish the Void Walker. Maybe spell bomb over third Ragavan, maybe um I'm gonna dash. Void mirror stops their pitch elementals, uh, you know, solitude and endurance. I guess they want they're not pitching endurance, but mostly solitude from being pitched. And it also stops the rebound of ephemerate. Falling right into their hands, giving them a, a land here. Might, might uh, bolt in my upkeep for surveil. So we can fear the Ragavan. I'm just gonna bolt them. Uh, oh, I, uh, sorry, I forgot that we could exile the voice with the Voidwalker. Max on TV, tier one, appreciate you. And Angry Chewy, thank you for your Twitch Prime subscription. 
I'm still gonna do this. This kills them next turn, but we should have bolted the voice, I think. Because we could have also cast the void mirror here. Cool, well, this is a, a really poor matchup, but thanks to uh, us drawing really well game one and our opponent keeping a really sketchy hand game two, yeah, I think they definitely should have gone to five. Uh, we're now playing for our fourth trophy of the season. All right, well, I'll keep this against the Luris deck. Kind of hope this isn't Mill. I mean, this hand maybe can beat Mill. Well, maybe you can get your channel points back here, Diraj. Right now. Make sure Free Perth or Team Months welcome back. My opponent has Death Shadow on top. It's fine against Shadow. All the dogs are out today. Yeah? Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay. Then Brinks. I don't think I've seen either of them. Hmm, I'm a boxer. Then, I went to Paula. Fuck it up. Had a chow chow on the leash, but not the Paula. Paula was like. They have a thought he's on top. It was a, 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 well. I don't think Athena could take the Chihuahua. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'm not gonna run the Turok into all the unholy heats here, of course. But it might just get thought seized. Yeah, yeah. To answer your question about Seal of Fire, it's just Seal of Fire and Lightning Bolt are so much better than, or sorry, Lightning Bolt and Unholy Heat are so much better than Seal of Fire. Like, I would not play the first Seal of Fire before I was playing four copies of each, and that's just too much one-mana removal. And I don't, I don't know if I'm going to play this deck in the challenge uh, on Saturday. I might. Uh, I'm kind of just trying to get a few reps in with, with, like, the different decks I'm on to see what I want to be playing. And then next weekend, I'm going to be taking the um, the week off from the usual challenge gaming. I'm going to go camping with some friends of mine. Very excited for that. I guess I didn't need to do that right. Their hand is Death Shadow and Holy Heat and Holy Heat Thoughtsies, right? That's I misremembering. Right, they they revealed this Thoughtsies to the second bobble. Right? Because if I'm wrong about that, I need to put Luris in my hand. I think uh, I think that I'm right about that. I'm just gonna pass. No, they didn't fetch it away. I don't think. I think that they got their they they bobbled scryed and then they got their blood crib tapped after the scry and then we bobbled them, which I think was incorrect of them to sequence it that way. Good morning, Shane. How are you doing today, buddy? Yeah, I, I really dislike my opponent casting their Thoughtseize here when, I guess, I guess they're trying to clear the way for their Shadow, but when I, I think that in these spots you're supposed to save the discard spell for the Luris, maybe? Maybe not. Maybe it's close. Then Shadow, Unholy Heat, Unholy Heat. We get to Luris in our hand here. Maybe they'll just draw another discard spell. And you know, th this is gonna die to an unholy heap. We're gonna get, you know, two for one. No, they didn't draw another discard spell, did they? Okay, just playing the shadow that we knew about. Uh, kind of a tough spot. They only have one red mana. I think I want to play my Luris here. 
man. It's close. I'm I'm pretty scared of what of them drawing another discard spell and me not getting any value off of Dolores. I think I do want to bobble now because I want to draw be able to kill this with the burn spell if I top deck one. They're drawing another Darcy. Which means if they tap their red mana for Darcy next turn, we should be able to go terminate Darcy plus uh dash Ragavan. Which is a dashing Ragavan maybe a bit awkward against the shadow. Their hand is now Unholy Heat Darcy Mystery Card. I feel like the mystery card is likely to be another uh, Unholy Heat or, or Bolt or maybe Push. Let's we get to find out. I was right about that. Let me take the Bolts. Terminate and then just try to get my dash value in. They just have so many, they just have so many one mana spells we could cast here that I think I want to get this hit in. We can give Monkey for a strike. Yeah, but then they, they just have a 3-3 three, three to block the 2-1. First strike doesn't matter. Oh no, I'm just one mana short of casting the Scourge. Brutal. Do you think this deck works with that Ragavan? I mean, it, it like plays... You can play it's you can play the deck and win without Ragavan, yeah. It's a lot it's worse without it. Uh for sure. A second shadow off the top is brutal. But Kroxa Kroxa is a good top deck. Issue with Kroxa here is if we escape it, then their both their shadows become six sixes. But we could maybe just block a Kroxa on a shadow. If you want to. They might, it, it, it's actually like, they probably should just cast their Unholy Heat, right? They have Heat, well the Kroxa makes them discard the Heat. But they can they can cast the Heat on Kroxa right now, so that way if I escape the Kroxas, their shadows are 9-9s. Nine nines, and then I have to chump block. Yeah. So if we escape Kroxa, chump block, Dash Ragavan, escape Kroxa again, they die. So this this wins if they draw a land. Which is probably all we can hope for here. It's been a really good game. These these games are always super good and interesting. They draw land, they put Luris in hand. Well, if it's a fetch land, they die, right? No, maybe not. But you're right, if they draw land, they, they probably just put the Luris in their hand. And we might have to draw Lightning Bolt or hit Lightning Bolt off Ragavan. They drew another Shadow. All right, GG. Really good game. Land did it. Uh, no, we had the we had the first strike. No, why would land have done it? Or land would have if they had drawn a land, we would have won. Well, my final thoughts on the random mirror list for a few days ago. I feel like the deck was playable. I might want to revisit it. Um, it wasn't like one of the best decks in the format, but I liked the deck. I thought it was good. Is Robber of the Rich playable in modern? Uh, not really. Like, you would play Dark Confident over Robber of the Rich. I think that's kind of a common trap that players fall into when they're looking for a budget replacement for a card. That they see, oh, Ragavans, you know, a bunch of money. I don't want to buy Ragavans. Robber of the Rich does something similar to Ragavan. I'm going to replace Ragavan with Robber of the Rich. When instead, you know, a card like Dark Confidant is, does, like, provides a similar role for being a creature you put into play and provides card advantage while pressuring your opponent. And it doesn't do it as well, but Dark Confidant's better. I mean, Dark Confidant is also, you know, maybe out of your budget too, but there, there, there's gotta be a better option. Like, then you would play Magmatic Channeler as like the budget Dark Confidant maybe, right? Um, so like Magmatic Channeler would probably be like your budget option over either of those, which is still like a fine card in this deck, you know? And and so it's like when people are trying to like replace Snapcaster in their blue decks, 
they will put mission briefing in their deck instead because mission briefing is like a similar effect to Snapcaster, but the card is like a 2-1 body is so much more relevant than Surveil 2. So instead, I think that you should usually just play Factor Fiction instead. I'm going to play Ragavan on one. If my opponent plays Darcy, I'm going to want to fear the Ragavan, so I guess I'll get Blood Crypt. Big Hedges, awesome. Oh, you like it, the stream? The stream's definitely been really good since MH2. Before that, eh. <laughs> I just play eight Darcy's. Get a note from your doctor that says I'm I don't want to buy Ragavan because it might get banned, so I get I can play eight Darcy's instead. Now we have Delirium, so this doesn't die to unholy heat anymore. Let's die to prismatic ending. Dude, their hand is so much better than ours, holy shit. Here, we have to take the Scourge, I think. Yeah, by proxies. They're gonna go Darcy, Prismatic Ending, my Darcy. I guess that gives them Delirium too. Maybe I needed to take the Prismatic Ending. Might be uh, losing for 5 0 again, chat. Mardu Shadow seems to be a really good deck. Maybe underplayed. They drew Bobble. It's pretty strong. Cool. I mean, next turn, if they, if they just cast their Voidwalker and we go Colgon's Command, kill Voidwalker, get Ragavan Dash. Uh, and assuming that, you know, goes smoothly for us. I think we're going to be in okay shape. Ooh. They already used their prismatic ending. Yep. Brooks are just too good not to play here. We have enough cards to escape, so we don't need to play Verdant Catacombs. What is the white for an opponent's deck? Prismatic Ending and Wear Tear. Uh, yeah, probably the, mainly those two cards. Uh, maybe Kataki in the sideboard too. They discard the Voidwalker. Then it's Dismember, Mystery Card, Mystery Card. Should I just escape the, the Croaks uh, leaving Ragavan in my yard because I've got Colagon's Command? Ragavan is, or Crooks is probably our biggest advantage in this matchup. I'm kind of surprised they discarded the Voidwalker though. Like I feel like the Dismember was worse than the Voidwalker with the cards we knew about. They must have just drawn Crooks. Like they just didn't get to do anything with their mana last turn. Not sure. They also have Kroxa. I didn't. I didn't know that they had that card. That's like Kroxa again. Like I was just saying, I feel like is our biggest advantage in the matchup. The fact that they also have it makes me feel a bit worried. Scourge is also a six six. I think we have to attack here. They're gonna just dismember mystery card. If they sandbag to land, this is really bad for us. But I don't think that they did, or at least I think we just have to hope they didn't. And then we can make them discard their last card, return Ragavan, Chump Block, Scourge. So like their last card is just Dismember. Scourge becomes a 10-10. So now we, we do need to fade a top deck uh, removal spell. Uh, could Fear the Kroxa before blocks? No, uh, Fear can only Fear does, is not unblockable. Fear can makes the creature only blocks by black creatures, which Scourge is black or, or or artifacts. Okay, we're gonna top deck the last game. Although most of their draws were like game winning uh, for them last game. Oh, they have Dismember. We just made them discard Dismember with Colagon's command. 
Yeah, I think I don't think my opponent's slow rolling. If they just drew a spell to discard, we have to draw something. They're gonna discard the Luris. So now we win if we draw a discard spell, lightning bolt, Kologon's command. Oh boy. This lets us Luris and, and chump block with Luris, but <sighs> tense, tense, tense. So we die to any removal spell off the top, and we think we beat anything else. Maybe not. Yeah, no, we beat. I guess they can host hold a creature in their hand and block with Scourge. But also, we we get to keep we get to keep Luris if they do, if they draw any non removal spell because they have to leave Scourge back to block Kroxa, discard their spell to Kroxa. and that means that's, that lets us dash Ragavan and kill them. So yeah, I think they just have to draw a removal spell this turn. Doesn't that fetch let you die to bolt? We die to bolt either way. Any removal spell kills us. And it, and, and please, how, how, how else could we... Uh, what other line do you suggest taking? Voidwalker... Oh, Voidwalker can't block. I see that. I see. Voidwalker, Voidwalker can't block. It has shadow. That's why we didn't Voidwalker there. I probably should have said that. But we got that game. Really close game. The top deck Krosa was crazy. Yeah, shout out to the Believers. Have to win one more game. Oh, this hand. Ah. We're on the draw. I think we'd find a mulligan that hand. This hand's fine. Keep that? I don't know. I think, I think that, you think that seven card hand was an easy keep? I don't know about that. It it definitely wasn't an easy keep. It was a close one. But I I I think that you could probably have kept it. The hand's like kind of awkward against maybe discard spell though. You take my Darcy. Isn't it worth it to keep the basic rather than fetch to make Scourge a bit worse? Well, I wanted to keep the fetch line because I have Crocs in my hand and I need more cards in the yard. But it like that's the other line of thinking, of course. With Darcy and Bobble, yeah, but we're on the draw against the discard deck. They take my I mean, I guess mulliganing its discard spells is not usually a good argument, but you you could be right. You could be right. I at least don't think it was unreasonable to mulligan that hand. Looking back at the hand, and only the hand you think you should have Urborg in the deck. Well, if I had Urborg in the deck, I wouldn't. It wouldn't have been in the hand. But I, I think that you're joking. But it is, it is always funny when people want cards that are like, I don't know. I know that you're kind of parodying those kind of comments. I, big draw step. Although they're gonna get to know what. This, Yeah, this hand drawing land land was definitely definitely made it a lot worse. And they get to discard their Inquisition. Game's not over. They surveil Shadow into the graveyard. <laughs> and then they play a card with Shadow. They get to know my they get to know all my draw steps. And I don't even get to Luris Bobble next turn. I can Luris Darcy, but They did miss their third land drop, which is probably not good for us, to be honest. Now with the Smarsh Flats they can unstrand any shadows that are in their hand, and they probably have one because they surveilled one into their yard. I could have maybe tried to bobble and find a removal spell this turn over Luris. It's probably not as good. I guess I could have just bobbled myself and seen. We do have explosives in our deck. We could draw like explosives, one mana removal spell. 
Oh man. Yeah, we have two explosives. We just have to draw like we just have to draw two, I guess. Well, we're in the middle of a very tense game here, but you can sit, yeah. Well, oh no. We drew the explosives. If we can find this, this does this goes to exile. Unfortunately, we have to do this now, so they can't cast anything off Voidwalker. Um, and then we're gonna take six and die unless we top deck the second explosives. Exactly. I guess we could go, we could get, draw a removal spell and go Luris Darcy Inquisition, and get Delirium and block and kill the other Darcy. Now they have three Darcy. Now it has to be the explosives. Man, what a game! What a game! Sorry, believers. Wonder what the uh, I don't know. Obviously, the keeping that hand feels worse when we draw like two lands in a row. I'm not sure. I think I think the mulligan was fine. I think it was definitely arguable. Tough game though. It would have been crazy to draw the second explosives. I am still liking the deck a lot though. We're gonna run it back. Dude, I love Angelic Overseer. I had a I had like a humans angels deck that I built for like some of my newer to magic friends to play at FNM and I had uh Angelic Overseer in the sideboard. Really good card. <laughs>